Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. I am Guthrie Chamberlain, your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our five-day-per-week wisdom and legacy-building podcast. This is day 846 of our trek, and it is Wisdom Wednesday. The past several months on Wednesdays, we have been focusing on interpreting current events through a biblical worldview. To establish a biblical worldview, it is important that we also have a proper understanding of God's Word. Especially in our Western cultures, we do not fully understand the scriptures from the mindset and the cultures of the author. In order to help us to have a better understanding of God's Word, we are investing the next several months on Wednesday, reviewing a series of essays from one of today's most prominent Hebrew scholars, Dr. Michael S. Heiser. And he has compiled all these essays into a book titled, I Dare You Not to Bore Me with the Bible. We are broadcasting from our studios at the Big House in Marietta, Ohio. Our personal moral code and the moral code of every country are based on a set of values. In most Western cultures, this code was based on what we consider the Ten Commandments. Most of the world's cultures have a similar value system, even if it does not have the same base. In today's essay, let's look at some of the details and even the number of actual commandments which were given by God. And our essay today is titled, Counting the Ten Commandments. One of the most enduring elements of the Bible and the Judeo-Christian worldview within our Western culture is the Decalogue, or what we refer to as the Ten Commandments. Even if you can't recite them all, most of us have seen the fiery finger of God etch those commandments on two stone tablets as Moses played by Charleston Hessen, who watches in awe. It seems to go without saying that the list of the Ten Commandments is something that Judaism and Christianity have always agreed upon. Well, that's not exactly true. Historically speaking, Jews and Christians, and even denominations within Christianity, have disagreed on exactly how the Ten Commandments should be listed and expressed. In fact, how to precisely spell out the commandments was an issue of considerable importance during Protestant Reformation. The differences concerns how many commands are to be found in the first six verses and the last two verses of Exodus chapter 20 verses 2 through 17. As I read this passage which contains the Ten Commandments as received by Moses at Sinai, it may become evident why there is some confusion and disagreement. So listen as I read. Then God gave people all these instructions. I am the Lord your God. He rescued you out of the land of Egypt, the place of your slavery. You must not have any other God but me. You must not make for yourself an idol of any kind or an image of anything in heaven or on earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affections for any other gods. I lay the sins of the parents upon the children. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me. But I lavish unfailing love on the thousands of generations of those who love me and obey my commands. You must not misuse the name of the Lord your God, The Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Remember to observe the Sabbath day and keep it holy. You have six days each week for your ordinary work, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath day of rest dedicated to the Lord your God. On that day, no one in your household may do any work. This includes you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, your livestock, and any foreigners living among you. For in six days the Lord made the heavens, the earth, the sea, and everything in them. But on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and set it apart as holy. Honor your father and mother. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely against your neighbor. You must not covet your neighbor's house. You must not covet your neighbor's wife, male or female servants, ox or donkey, or anything else that belongs to your neighbor. And that concludes the reading of Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. One point of context is required before we can fully understand the thinking behind the differences in the listing and the expressions of the commandments. Any listing of the commandments must result in a total of ten, because in three other passages of Scripture, the number of commandments is fixed at ten. And those passages are Exodus chapter 34, verse 27, Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 13, and Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 4, each which clearly states that God has given Moses in the Hebrew, which is Azareth, Havarim, 
which means ten words or ten statements at Sinai. Interestingly, the Jewish tradition treats the statement in Exodus chapter 20 verse 2 as a command when the wording has no imperative force to it at all. This latitude arises from the fact that the Hebrew text in the Old Testament exclusively uses Azrith Haverim, or ten words, instead of Azrith Hemisvot, or ten commandments, which is used in the same translation in Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 6. After regarding Exodus chapter 20 verse 2 as the first words of the ten, verses 3 through 6 are thematically understood as speaking as a single prohibition, making idols for worship. There are exactly three imperative statements in these groups of verses. You must not have any other gods but me. You must not make for yourself an idol or any kind of image or of anything in heaven or on earth or in the sea. And the third one is, you must not bow down to worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God who will not tolerate your affections for any other God. These three imperative statements must be considered as one, otherwise it would extend the total of commandments beyond ten and we know that it is fixed at 10. Christian perceptions of Exodus chapter 20 are not rooted in the Hebrew terminology Azareth Harvarim, 10 words, and so Christian formulations do not regard verse 1 as the first point of the Decalogue. As a result, all of Exodus chapter 20 verses 2 through 6 is considered the starting point, and the imperative word, you must not, prompted the commandment terminology so widely known and used today. The enumeration or numbering adopted by Roman Catholicism, Anglicanism, and Lutheranism originated with Augustine. While they prefer it, the numbering of Augustine is not the point of dogma. Section 2066 of the Catechism of the Catholic Church is representative of the knowledge that the division of numbering of the commandments have varied in the course of history. Reformed Protestants and Greek Orthodox Christians also reject verse 1 as a command, but distinguish verse 3 from verses 4 through 6 as the first and second commandments. This position likewise is not dogmatically taken. The last two verses in this passage are the other major point of divergence in expressing the number and contents of the commandments. Roman Catholicism, Anglicanism, and Lutheranism divide Exodus chapter 20 verse 17 into two commands to achieve the number of ten a necessity in view of seeing Exodus chapter 20 verse 2 through 6 as the first command. This dichotomy is perhaps puzzling since the entirety of the contents of verse 17 speaks of one's household and possessions in light of the thematic grouping at the beginning of the Decalogue. Thematic grouping at the beginning of the Decalogue and thematic splitting at the end doesn't make sense unless one keeps in mind the need to wind up with 10. Despite the numerical disagreement over how to count the Ten Commandments, the moral code of the Judeo-Christian ethic has never been in doubt among those Jews and Christians who take the Bible seriously. In all biblical interpretation, we must compare Scripture with Scripture, and it is clearly written in three other verses that the commandments or the words that God gave to Moses in Sinai were exactly ten. The lack of certainty on how to count these Ten Commandments is no impediment on understanding importance for honoring God and our fellow human beings. And that will conclude our essay for today. Next Wisdom Wednesday, we will continue with Moses as we look at Dr. Heiser's next essay titled, Is There Really a Sin Offering? I believe that you'll find this another interesting topic to consider as we build our biblical worldview. Tomorrow we will continue with our three-minute wisdom nugget that will provide you with a bit of wisdom that, if followed, will allow you to grow healthier, wealthier, and wiser each day. So encourage your friends and family to join us and to come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. That will finish our trek for today. If you'd like to listen to end the past 845 treks or read the wisdom journals, they are all available at wisdom-trek.com. I encourage you to subscribe to Apple Podcasts or Google Play so that each day's track will be downloaded to you automatically. And thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I am your friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal. And as we take this trek of life together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, Lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and then leave a living legacy each day. I am Beth Chamberlain, reminding you to keep...
keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.